So when you butcher animals on a farm, you are left with a lot of things left over. So last year when we harvested the ducks, we did a little bit of an experiment. I took all of the blood and guts and extra parts from the ducks and I put them out in the far back reaches of our pasture. I'm talking about three quarters of a mile away from the spot that I'm standing in right now. I wanted to be far enough away that I wouldn't attract new animals to the farm. I carried the buckets of grossness and dumped it out in the middle of nowhere. I also had uh, two dead raccoons that my friend Zach had asked me to um, dispose of because he caught them trying to kill his chickens. And I took a couple of trail cameras and set them up to try to see who could visit. So there's one here, there's one here, then I've got one right there. And let me just tell you good people, I was not disappointed in the least bit. Our humble deposit of dead brought all sorts of interesting creatures. of magical to go out there and check in at different points and see the decomposition that happened and see the various animals that came to scavenge and it, it actually made me really appreciate the diversity that we have here on the farm when we harvest our animals here on our farm we try to use as much of them as possible obviously there's the meat of the bird we saved all of the fat that we collected when we were butchering the the birds and we bagged that up so that we could render it down sometime in the near future we saved the feet for making stock with we saved all of the organs for making various things like pates and other tasty delicious things the necks are gonna keep allison and me in soup for the entire winter I'm trying an experiment where I'm trying to dry out their down and use it to make a comforter that'll keep us warm this winter. Look, our animals are giving us their lives to feed us and our friends and our people in the community. And it would feel absolutely disrespectful if we weren't using the entire animal. But all that said, when we butchered 26 geese and one duck here on our farm the other day, we had some leftovers that we couldn't actually use. And when I say leftovers, I mean, it's the gross stuff. It's the intestines, it's the heads, it's the blood. Some people will call it the awful. And that meant we had to figure out a way to use that stuff to its maximum effect. And by use that stuff, I mean like really use it. Like put it to some sort of good purpose or use. I mean, there's some people who would insist that you compost that sort of thing. And I think that's a reasonable way to use it. If we had pigs or a dog, I probably would have fed it to them and let them enjoy all those extra goodies. But we don't have any of those things here, so I needed to come up with some sort of other creative solution. Some sort of way to maximize the use of our birds' extra stuff. In case you guys are trying to keep track, we have two barn cats here on the farm. One is Lil Barn Cat, the other is Pablo Barn Cat, who's the one sitting on this bucket. You know, I work really hard to try to protect our animals from predators. I don't want them to be killed. I don't want to attract predators. But I also know that a good, healthy ecosystem requires predators. And so as I'm trying to farm here in Northern Vermont, I'm trying to do it in a way where I'm doing it in a balance with nature. And so to offer up a sacrifice like that to the animals of this farm who are not of this farm, if you know what I mean, it actually felt like a great use of things. And I found it to be pretty daggone educational too. So this year, as I had all the remnants of our geese after the somewhat disastrous goose harvest, I figured 
it'd be the perfect activity to try to do it again. So what I did was I gathered up all the gunk and blood and guts and intestines and heads, put it in a garbage bag and brought it all the way back there. And, and I spread it all out there, set the cameras up, and acted very patient and waited to see what would show up. Well, yesterday, I went back out there and I was kind of stupefied. I mean, I didn't expect things to happen that quick. It was gone, empty, completely cleaned out, nothing there. So I grabbed my trail cameras and rushed in to see what was actually on the footage and my jaw dropped. About an hour after I deposited all the grossness, there was one turkey vulture that showed up. And then over the span of a couple of hours, several turkey vultures showed up. Now turkey vultures are one of the few true sort of uh, scavenger birds or scavenger class bird. I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I'm terrible at ornithology, but uh, they're like our big super scavenger birds here. Uh, we don't have like the regular vultures like you see in the cartoons. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Uh, huh? They kind of look like a turkey and they kind of look like a vulture, but I believe genetically speaking, they're not all that closely related to either bird. You can see them flying and hovering over a head a lot of times, uh, scanning the territory for dead animals. And I will tell you, they found our pocket of deadness and they went to town. I mean, they were chomping away. And over the span of like one day, they completely cleaned house. It was amazing. There wasn't a single coyote that stopped by. There wasn't a single other animal to sneak a bite. All turkey vultures all the time. I think there was like one or two ravens that got to sneak in there and get some of the, the, the very end leavings. But those turkey vultures cleaned house and it was amazing. And you guys might be wondering why I'm sounding so excited and happy about the fact that my goose entrails were consumed by a whole bunch of turkey vultures. Well, for me, it kind of goes a little something like this. The turkey vultures are part of this farm just as much as these geese are, or our ducks are, or our barn cats are, or I am. We're all just animals occupying this single space. For me to offer up something to them, to help them as they make their contributions to this ecosystem, feels like a good way for the geese to meet their end. I mean, for the most part, the geese are gonna feed my wife and me and our friends and our family and our neighbors. But there's also a portion of them that's going to go to the greater wilderness that we have here. And I don't know, I just think that that's how it should be. I often talk about what I wanna to happen to me when I die. And I'll talk about the idea of being eaten by a bear when I'm 104 years old. And, and people are horrified by that idea. But again, it's not that different than this premise of feeding goose entrails to a bunch of turkey vultures. It's all just part of the cycle. And by participating in that cycle, it makes me a part of this farm. That is a very beautiful thing. And it's about as close to immortality as I think I will ever glimpse. So I think it's great to give back to the scavengers amongst this farm. Come on, geeses, let's go. In case you guys are wondering about a goose update, the five geese that we have left are, are pretty chill. They are very relaxed. They don't seem to have the manic energy that comes with the bigger flock. My next goal with them is gonna be to start to introduce them and mix them with our ducks so that I can ultimately build out one flock before winter comes. And that's who I'm gonna house in our new duck house, which I will give you guys a very good preview of probably in the next video or two. So stay tuned for that. Time for bedtime. Let's go guys. Time for bedtime. 
Bedtime for the geese. I will admit that they've become somewhat more stubborn though. They're a little harder to herd in at night. Not too bad, but. Come on, come on. There we go. Everybody's gonna be safe for tonight. Don't wanna get eaten by the coyotes, huh? Go, come on.